covered my mic that time, Frank. <laughs> Frank called me out for slurping on the microphone. Good to see you, Frank. Yeah, amen. Today, uh, my sermon is titled, Scooby-Doo and the Holy Ghost Mystery. Now, I originally planned this for next week, but we have the Easter Land Chorus coming. Now, next week is very close to Halloween, and Scooby-Doo is one of my favorite characters, and he chases ghosts and monsters around, and it's very similar and very associated with Halloween, and thank you for setting that up, Bob. And uh, so I'm going to talk about that. Now, I just need to check the room real quick. We all know who Scooby-Doo is, right? All right, let's see how much we know. Who here can do an impersonation of Scooby-Doo? I heard, ro raggy he, he, he could talk, but not, not well, which is pretty amazing. All right, let's see what else you know. At the end of every episode, what does the criminal who gets caught say? You would have got away, I would have got away with it if it wasn't for you meddling kids. Okay, all right, so, so we're getting there. Now, uh, the character Shaggy, we know who Shaggy is. What is his catchphrase or catchword? No, that's Shaggy, or no, that's Scooby. Zoinks, that's right, he says zoinks. Side note, Casey Kasem from America's Top 40, he was the guy who did Shaggy. All right, back to the sermon. Um, What's her name? Uh, Thelma. Not the, Velma. Velma is the smart one, right? The one with the glasses. She had a word that she said all the time when she was surprised. What did she say? Jinkies. Jinkies. Okay. All right. So some of us got it a little bit better than others. We know who Scooby-Doo is. Scooby-Doo has been around since 1969. Next year, Scooby-Doo will turn 50, which is not old. Right, Chris? That's not old. Right? Brad, that's not old at all. No? Okay. Yeah. 50, 50 is the new... 50, 20, <laughs> you know, it's fine, it's fine, we're seasoned, we're seasoned, okay, all right, so we know who Scooby-Doo is, and we know that Scooby-Doo quite often is associated with Halloween, uh, they chase ghosts, they chase uh, monsters, and they reveal them for who they really are. Now, the Scooby-Doo gang, they'll go into a town, and they will They'll, they'll go in there to a town that is supposedly haunted by a ghost or sometimes terrorized by a monster. And by the end of every episode, they search and they, they look into things and they discover that this ghost was really a projector and some pulleys and this monster was just a human being behind a mask. And then the proper authorities get involved and everybody lives in peace. Now, the Scooby-Doo gang, would we consider them superheroes? No, they're not really super. I mean, Scooby-Doo is a great Dane that can talk. That's, that's, that's not superhuman, but that is super canine, you know. Um, but, uh, but still, they don't really have super strength. They can't fly. They don't have telekinetic powers. They can't shoot lasers from their eyes. But still, they go where others are afraid to go. And they rescue people from their fears. And they fight crime. So I think maybe they should be considered superheroes of sorts. The Scooby-Doo gang, they do have a superpower, and their superpower is a dogged perseverance. Their perseverance, it carries them through and past their fears. Where other people are afraid to go into that old haunted mansion, they'll go right in there. When other people are afraid to go into that spooky old warehouse, they go right in. Their perseverance pushed them beyond the boundaries of fear that crippled the townsfolk who were haunted by ghosts and terrorized by monsters. You see, the Scooby-Doo gang is only armed with flashlights. And with, and with those flashlights comes a brave curiosity. And that curiosity is bolstered by the assurance that the truth will be revealed. People tell them there's a ghost in this town, and they don't buy it. They want to see the truth. You see, ghosts, they tend to thrive in the darkness, right? And see, the light that uh, reveals the monsters and ghosts in Scooby-Doo, it's real physical light. And would-be criminals and wrongdoers are revealed to just be human after all and not so scary. And then they're escorted away by the proper authorities. 
To draw out the impact of the Scooby-Doo gang, what does it look like for a town that is haunted by ghosts or held in fear of monsters if the mystery machine never rolls into their town? What if they never show up? It seems to me that if they never show up, that that town will remain gripped with fear and evil intentions will get their way. Ah, but they do show up. They do show up and they bring light and bravery and perseverance, chasing away the ghosts and monsters that are in that community by revealing the truth, the truth that these evil things have no real power. The same is true for us when we bring our fears to the light. They're revealed for what they really are. And likewise, the truth of our fears is often revealed by perseverance. Today's scripture, it calls us to be the light, to walk in the light and to shine the light. We who claim the name Christian are armed with the light of Jesus and equipped with the blessed assurance of his resurrection. So what does it look like for us to be the light in the darkness of this world? What does that look like? Now, are we to get on soapboxes and grab bullhorns and start accusing everyone who passes by of their sins? Nope. That's not what the scripture said today. The scripture, it says to not even mention the evil deeds done, by, done in the darkness. Instead, it tells us to be children of the light, knowing that our light will make all things visible. The way we live our lives, being light, being people of integrity, people who follow Jesus' words. My friend, Reverend Ben DeVoid, he said, I'm not convinced that Jesus is interested in whether or not I'm appalled. He says, I don't, I don't think Jesus cares whether I'm appalled or not. He desires that I act with kindness. And I get that. John, Wish, John Wesley, he preached, do all you can by all the means you can and all the ways you can and all the places you can at all the times you can to all the people you can as long as ever you can. To John Wesley, that's what being a child of light, being in Jesus' light looked like. Now, we could get on our soapboxes and spew outrage over other people's sins, but I don't think that's what shining our light looks like. Shining our light looks like when we welcome the stranger, when we feed the hungry, we clothe the naked, care for the sick, and visit the prisoner. That's what shining a light looks like according to the Gospel of Matthew. There's a story that I heard the other day. Some of us might be familiar with a woman. Her name is Corey Ten Boom. Now, she, um, she's someone, uh, her family, uh, she comes from a family of watchmakers. They're Dutch, and they're known for hiding refugees during World War II. Jewish refugees, Jewish refugees came and hid in their house from the Nazis. And they're known for being brave and strong in the face of that terrible danger. And they hid these people knowing that they could be killed for doing so. They were people of light, people of integrity. And Corrie ten Boom tells this story about her father, a watchmaker, her father is a watchmaker, and they, they made fine watches, and, and they made handcrafted watches. Every piece was machined by hand. It takes them a long time to build just one of them. Now, during World War II, times were very lean for a lot of folks. To sell just one watch would have covered them for months. And they had a person come into their store one day, and things were looking pretty bleak. They didn't have a lot. They were, they were running out of everything. And they were sharing what they did have with the people that were taking refuge among them. The person came into his shop, and he was looking to buy a new watch. And Corey, uh, young Corey, she was very excited because she knew selling this one watch was going to cover them for months. And he was ready to buy it. And then he explained, yeah, I need to get a new watch because this other one just stopped working. It was a gift, but, you know, I need to know what time it is. I hate to, I hate to let it go or replace it, but... Her father looked at his watch, and he knew he could fix that watch very easily for about five bucks. He knew that. Now, he could have just kept that information to himself. 
and just sold his personal watch and been able to provide for his family. But his integrity came through and he explained to this man, you know, I can fix that watch. It'd be about five bucks. And he was so thankful and he did that. And Corey tells that story and she says that the courage to live a life of integrity often is fostered by that memory of her father doing the, the right thing in the middle of the fear of scarcity that they lived in. We're always called to do the right thing, even when we're afraid. A person very close to me, he, uh, he backed his truck up into a pipe that was sticking up out of the ground. It was hard to see. It used to be a basketball goal and just kind of bent over and just a pipe is sticking up out of the ground. So he backed his truck up into it and he wrecked his bumper pretty bad. I was like, oh man, that's, that's awful. awful. Not awesome, it's awful. I just created a new word, awful. It's somewhere between awesome and awful. Anyways, I said, that's awful. He said, no, nah, I'm just going to call my insurance company and just tell them you know, somebody ran into me at the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, we can't do that. He's like, why not? They, they don't even come out anymore. I'll just call them on the phone. They'll cover it. And I said, you can't do that. <laughs> and, uh, and he's like, why not? They're not going to catch me. I was like, that's not the point. It's lying. It's lying. And, you know, it didn't make sense to him. And I, I'll have to tell you that this person is still very close to me. And this person struggles with his finances and um, makes a lot of decisions based on whether or not he gets caught. Here's, here's the truth, folks. You're always caught. <laughs> we, there's no hiding from God. There's no hiding from God's spirit. You see, it would make sense for a lot of folks to go ahead and call the insurance company and lie to them and get the bumper paid for. For a lot of folks in this world, that would make sense. But we're called to be different. We are Christians. We're called to be different, and what makes sense in this world is not what drives us. We are motivated by God's Holy Spirit to live in ways that are consistent with God's kingdom and not what this world would tell us to do. Dr. Seuss quoted, he said, why fit in when you were born to stand out? Why fit in when you were born to stand out? We are Christians. We were born to stand out. We were born to shine light in the darkness, freeing the world from fear. Often our light doesn't shine that brightly because of our guilt and our shame and our pain, but we shine it anyways. Now sometimes the ghosts that haunt us are in our own past. Sometimes being a hero means conquering the villains inside ourselves. Sometimes we need to shine the light on the ghosts in our past. We need to remove their masks and reveal that they have no real power over us. For me, and I'll tell you this, this story, it's very personal. For me, for years, I was haunted by some hurtful things that my ex-father-in-law said to me. I love this man. I still love this man. He, um, he was very much a father to me, and I respected him. He retired a full bird colonel. He was a pastor as well, and... and, and I thought the world of him, and I looked up to him, but when his daughter and I split up, he said some really hateful things to me. His words haunted me for years, but as time passed, I shone the light on those words, on those memories. I shined the light of truth and wisdom on those painful memories, and I realized that he was just a hurt person lashing out on me out of a sense of loss and confusion. And those memories that made me feel terrible, like I wasn't a good person, when I really shined the light on them, the light of truth and wisdom, on those memories, I realized that I was twice the husband he ever was and ten times the father. And I unmasked the ghosts of those memories. I arrested them. And when I unmasked them, they had no power. They didn't scare me or threaten me anymore. When I pulled the mask off those memories, I realized 
that behind them was just a human being. And those hurtful memories were arrested and I moved on with my life in peace. You see, monsters in our closets, they go away when you open the door. Now, what if Scooby-Doo and the Scooby-Doo crew and the mystery machine, what if they rolled into a town where everyone was serving each other, including the least of them? Let's say they, they rolled into a town where they were all kind to each other and thankful for what they had. A town where everybody is honest and deals with each other fairly. What if they start asking questions about this unusual place and everyone acknowledges that there is a ghost in this town? A spirit. A spirit that doesn't frighten them but inspires them to be good people. Well, that's a a mystery worth trying to solve, right? In that town, the ghost that they speak of, it doesn't haunt them but it inspires them. They're not afraid of this spirit, but they celebrate it and are thankful for it. The Scooby-Doo gang would discover that this ghost, this spirit, is not a man-made creation. It's not an elaborate hoax pulled off by wires and projectors. There is no one hiding behind a mask waiting to be revealed. No, this spirit is of God, which makes it divine, which makes it holy. And because of this spirit, and because this spirit is of God, this mystery will never be solved. Not in human terms or human understanding. This Holy Spirit is a mystery that will never be solved, and it doesn't have to be. You know, we don't always have to be like Velma and try to solve every mystery. Sometimes we just have to accept that something is mysterious, and that's okay. So brothers and sisters, we know that evil thrives in the darkness. Evil in this world would get away with it too if it wasn't for us meddling kids, us Christians, us who God calls his children, shining light in the darkness. ra re ru alleluia, and amen. And now let's sing our closing hymn. Not in Scooby-Doo's voice, please. <laughs>